Hi, my name is Eric Haywood. I'm a writer, a member of the Writers Guild of America West Board of Directors, and a member of the 2023 Negotiating Committee. Every time the guilds are about to head into negotiations, the trade press fills with stories about how the business is crumbling. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Somehow, every three years, these massive multinational corporations suddenly claim to become incapable of turning a profit. But is it true? The fact is, these stories are spread by the companies in order to discourage and disempower Hollywood labor by convincing us and the public that they can't afford to pay us for the value we create. That misinformation is rarely challenged by industry trade publications that are dependent on those companies for their revenue and can become so pervasive that even some of our coworkers and friends assume it to be true. So in this video, I'm gonna share the facts on the current economics of the business so that you have the information you need as we approach the upcoming negotiations. Despite a series of destructive mergers and the transition to a streaming first model, over the past decade, the industry's revenue base increased from $150 billion to over $220 billion a year, with revenue from streaming driving the growth. Now, you might be asking, that's revenue. What about profits? Well, profits have grown massively as well. In 2000, the combined operating profits of the entertainment divisions of the major companies amounted to just $5 billion. But for the past few years, between 2017 and 2021, the combined entertainment segment profits of those companies were between $28 and $30 billion a year. Even during the pandemic, those profits declined only slightly. Now, profits in 2022 were a bit lower, but that's largely because Wall Street's obsession with growth caused Discovery to pursue an expensive merger and is taking billions of dollars in one-time losses. But remember, even though the companies agreed to negotiate with us as a group, we are under no obligation to allow the short-term tactical losses taken by one company to shield them all from paying writers fairly for the value we create. The surest sign that companies know that our industry is healthy is that they're investing an enormous amount of money in the future of that industry. In just the last four years, companies have gone from spending $5 billion on streaming content to over $14 billion. This year, spending on original programming for streaming is anticipated to be over $19 billion. Look at that growth. And that's not even counting the billions that legacy companies will spend making media for linear or theatrical that will eventually wind up on those streaming platforms as well. So that's the true economic landscape. Over $100 billion of profit over the last decade, and companies confidently spending tens of billions of dollars on new content to fuel future growth. So, during this enormous boom we helped create for the companies, how have writers fared? Not great. Let's take a look at the largest sector of guild employment, TV. In streaming, show budgets have increased by 50% over the past decade, but the average writer-producer's weekly income has dropped by 4% over the same time period. And when you factor in inflation, weekly income has dropped 23% in the last 10 years. Let me repeat that. 10 years of skyrocketing company profits and spending, and our incomes have dropped 23%. It gets worse. 10 years ago, around 33% of series writers worked for Guild Minimum. Now it's 50%. Meanwhile, screenwriter pay has stagnated. Typical writer compensation hasn't budged since 2018. When accounting for inflation, screen pay has declined 14% in the last five years, and that pay has stretched out over time by endless demands for free work. That decrease in real writer income and that devaluation of our work wasn't caused by economic troubles in the industry. It was a choice the companies made to pay us less and to make our work more precarious, even as the product we make for them generates more value for them than ever. During negotiations, our goal is to reverse that trend. We have to reclaim our fair and reasonable share of the industry's future profits and spending based on fair and reasonable value of our work. As always, if you have any questions, check out our 2023 MBA campaign website or contact your WGA captain. And stay tuned for the next video.